So hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 and in this video I want to talk about look dev and we will also use marvelous designer and try to make something interesting and cool. So let's get started. I want to add more detail to the whole rendering by adding cloth to the situation. Therefore we'll need to create our collider body. Therefore I will select my wine zero, I'll convert it. We then let's copy all the three things and put them into a connect object. Anyway, so let's select our connect object, file, export, FBX, selection only, switch to marvelous designer, file, import, add, FBX, marvelous designer. And first things first, we need to deactivate the ground because yeah, you can see cloth will explode and do weird stuff if we don't untick the ground here. That's pretty easy. I mean, anyway, this part is extremely easy what we're doing here. Nothing fancy at all. I'm rotating this guy, putting it just roughly in position. Select the point. Point. Well, actually, let's move this up. And we knew one point was here. And then we go for internal line, internal ellipse. And I'm pressing shift to have a clean circle. And the second one was here. And then I will select both of them. And we will right click and cut and just get rid of it but obviously not this one we need to get rid of them let's see um if our cuts were correct eh, not perfect but that's pretty easy so we just select one and move it a bit to even more perhaps to this, yeah something like that perfect and we're done now we need to crank up the resolution of the class let's try our 12 and let's switch our view that we can see our polygons I think this is a decent amount. Mm, I wasn't sure if the stone should be covered or should be visible. I had both and still I couldn't decide. Let's open the picture viewer and I had some snapshots from my previous rendering in there. This was the tree without, with a little bit of um, foil on top of it, with zero foil and with a lot of foil. For our render, what would you say? Should we cover it all? Mm, let's cover it all for now so therefore we need to increase our edit so i'm selecting these two points let's make it a bit bigger simulate again and perhaps we can like manually create a few more wrinkles in here just a few i don't want to have too many wrinkles because i'm planning to do a plastic translucent material and if there's too much distortion it can it could annoy our view looks good to me and the last thing to be able to work better in Sima 4D, we just need to remesh this whole guy. And remeshing is already done, so we now need to quickly export this thing again as an FBX. And instead of calling it Collider, I will call it Marvelous. And I didn't check... Ah, oh, well, it still comes up. I didn't check for the right scale, so it's on centimeters. Just be aware of that, that you're not in millimeters, which I think is the default setting here. And we want to have unified coordinates but I don't need any of these maps and thin unwrapped single object is perfect so let's export it and this was the very super quick and easy basic thing in Marvelous. Then we can get back into Sim 4D, delete our collider thingy, let's make a bit more room in our hierarchy and I'm pressing shift command O to place the alembic into our scene and I think we can leave everything on default. Perfect, everything is perfectly aligned here. Now we just need to add a cloth and my default setting is probably good to go. Then let's have a look onto our materials. And I will also go into my previous work here and copy the shader, which I did for the plastic. That's this guy. And paste, now it's correct. Let's select it, put it over the cloth surface. Press save, which is always a good thing. I'm hiding the materials and I want to have a view onto my notes, shader notes here. So let's render. And let's see what we got there. So we still have the materials from Marvelous onto our default thing here. Let's delete this guy. And now the translucent material should be visible. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting. Definitely way different than the tryouts I made before. Mm, let's see if we can reposition the camera a little bit. And like I like the reflective part down there. That's pretty interesting. I think we are a bit too close though, something like that. And basically I created two different 
tinted glass materials and I'll show you both of them. So I have this guy, which is very thin. We can actually drop down the IOR there so it's even more, you can easier look through it. It feels very invisible here. That's pretty nice and there's just some roughness variation on it and I can preview this so you can see, but basically it's, well, I have to preview the ramp. It's pretty dark so that we don't have much imperfection and the other material is pretty, um, has a high roughness value so you can see it's very rough. Perhaps we can even make the contrast more. Then let's have a look onto our displacement because I don't have any displacement yet. Now also my redshift object, this is the default now. When I create it, I created the preset, which is kind of nice. So I have just one tessellation because I think anyway, it's quite tessellated already. And now we have displacement on and I'll press C to preview my maximum noise, which is going to be my displacement and which will drive the blending of these two materials. Let's try out another noise uh, seat. Which this could be kind of nice. Let's go back and try to preview this material itself. And this guy is like super rough. So you can see some areas now are very rough. And some of them are not rough at all. And we have a little bit of displacement going on. Let's even try to increase it a bit more. You can see this in this area here. This is pretty interesting. We get some tiny extra uh, details here. And now I think it's even time to add a little bit of depth of field. So I'll select this guy, create our depth of field point, and I'll activate my bokeh. It's just a bit to get, to reduce the intensity of this part here so we can focus more on the object itself. I think we need to integrate another light because these areas are too dark. It should be aluminum, it looks a bit weird. We can do this later on. And I think now when we add this gloss, glossy kind of material surface, I think the stone is too distracting. So we need to play around with the intensity for the stone. Let's see if we drop down, if, if we'll make it darker. Yeah, and I have the original albedo and I will color correct it a little bit and then I'll blend it as a soft light. So we only have very little happening here. Um, some details here, I can see that the distillation is not so nice at this point here also. Still, I think we have too much irregularities from the stone. Um, yeah, it could be, let's see, I'm perhaps trying out a few camera variations here and we can see the floor actually the floor still has this very high reflective material so that's why we get too much light from the bottom and i think this looks better now let's go a little bit closer and set the focus again so we are correct there and now we can even add more of the soft light down there and the stone can become a little bit more brighter and I want to adjust the background to the overall scene and I think it can also be a little bit more dark. So in general, I don't want to be too dark because all these classical typical wine shots are in a very dark um, environment and they have this classical light setup. And I uh, think we were better before. It would be also interesting to see how the frame looks like. Very poppy, with an intense background. Definitely interesting as well. So I would leave it to you to play around with the values. Oh, this looks also pretty nice. But for now I'll stay with the gray because this gives us like a very intense contrast. Looks nice. So this is the extra layer of detail what we got here. Let's have a look onto the whole thing, how the whole stone will look. Yep, looks nice. Just out of cur curiosity, I want to know how it looks if we really use like a cloth material here. And I only will preview this by switching the materials to plastic. Actually, this also looks very interesting. A warmer color. Yes, also interesting. But now the focus is less onto the bottle. It's more on the object on the floor. So that's not the way to go. So let's keep it with the glass. And let's finish the tutorial here and say again, thank you very much for listening. And hopefully see you next month. Enjoy your time. See you then. Bye bye.